I am Megan Walker and welcome to the letter N in the A to Z of real-time marketing. So N is all about the new emails and the new email templates and how we create them. And how is it different from the emails in the outbound marketing area? So one thing to keep in mind is you've got all of your stuff in the outbound marketing, which is what you've been using. You've got all your emails they're not in real-time marketing. They're a completely separate um, area. So we're going to look at the emails for real-time marketing and just know that you're going to still use when you do an outbound marketing uh, journey, you're still going to use emails from that area, but if you're starting to dip your toe in the real-time marketing, you're going to have to create your emails in this area and then use those in the journeys for real-time marketing. So what am I talking about? Let's take a look. Okay, so we are in the emails area in real-time marketing. And if we go to create a new email, we're still going to get the same thing where it pops up and says, okay, what email template do you want to use? So we've got some there, but again, you're not going to see the email templates you've created previously in that area. So these are new email templates. You've still got the same thing where you've got elements, you've got general styles, you've got personalized, you've got different things. Um, so it looks similar in terms of how the, the creation goes. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at an email template that I have created in terms of some customization. So I've got an image in there, I've got some text in there already. But let's go ahead and, and customize it now from, from this point. So I'm gonna go and I'm going to look at putting my subject in. So I've got feedback request. And this is going to be, if you watched the letter M where we made an event trigger, I'm going to use the event trigger to personalize this email. So what I'm doing is I've clicked on the personalize option and then I'm going in and I'm basically looking for the event trigger that I created, which is the case closed send survey, again, from the letter M. And I am putting into the subject where I'm gonna say, okay, well, I want the case number from the trigger that happens that we're going to then use to say we're gonna send this in the journey. So I'm not only able to customize from the uh, contact and their first name and things like that. I'm also able to use an event trigger to say if this event triggers we're going to use this email to send out and we're going to pass stuff through. So this is a fairly typical thing. I'm basically using the contact's first name as the personalization and then I can put in a default value. If for some reason there's no first name I can say hi there instead. And then in the preview text I'm basically saying could we ask for you to give some uh, feedback? So what are your thoughts? So we've got a subject and we have the preview text. Okay, so we can go ahead and we can change the image out, we can browse out, we can find the image we want to use, and then we can upload it into the asset library. Um, when we upload, we can also add key keywords and stuff like that, descriptions, and make it easier to find. We'll look at that in another video. So I'm, I've gone ahead and I've uploaded my image. That's the one that I want to use. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that personalization again. I'm going to click to add a data field, and then I'm just going to type in first name. So I'm going to find that from the contact. So again, I can put in a default value. If that field for some reason doesn't have a value, what do I want to display instead? So then our email is about a case that was recently closed. And what I'm doing is, again, I'm going to that event trigger. Now, because the event trigger was already set up and we used it in the subject, it has default and said, okay, this is the event trigger this email is now going to be used for. So I'm using the case owner, which is one of the values I'm passing back from my event trigger. So we can say the case was closed by case owner. And then I go, again, we're going back to the event um, trigger and we're getting case title. And it, we also have this default value. So there should always be a case title, but it's up to you if you want to put a default. Um, now we're going to go for the description on the case. Again, that's been passed back through from the event trigger. And then if there's nothing in there, we can say just put details of the case. Uh, then what we can do is on the last one, we'll do personalization again. We click and we go into the event trigger instead of the contact and all of our values, our attributes that we're passing back through, we're gonna go ahead and we are selecting them. Uh, 
Okay, so we've got all of our personalization in. Um, once we're happy with our email, that's great. Um, what we can also do then is one of the values that we were passing back through from the event trigger is we were passing through the um, survey invitation link that was generated from a customer voice action step. So again, if you haven't watched the letter M in this series, go ahead and watch that now. So I can add a button onto this email so that when somebody clicks the link, instead of having to put in a specific URL, I can use that personalization. I can go into the event trigger for the personalization. And then I've got survey URL is one of those things. Um, so that button will turn into a link that someone clicks on and goes to their unique personalized survey. So then I'm just changing the button text to say, share your thoughts. And then if I want to do any kind of style, I can change the color of the button, I can change the corner rounding, all of that good stuff. So again, that's the sort of functionality you would have been used to already and should have been using. Um, it's in the, the functionality is very similar. So in terms of creation, it shouldn't be that, that complicated. It's just now you've got all of this personalization stuff. So then I go ahead and I save my email I can then do the same thing, accessibility checker and spam checker like I have in Outbound. Um, and then what I've also got is that uh, test send option like I have. And then finally, once it's ready to go live, I'm clicking ready to send, which is essentially publishing it, making it live, so that then I can go ahead and I can use that email in a journey if I wanted to. So once it's live, that it's at that point where we can actually do it. Now the templates, again, Templates that you have created previously in Outbound are not found in the templates in real-time marketing. So I would come in here and I'd do the same thing again. I would go ahead and set up my, my email template if that I wanted to use, and I'd set that up in the um, uh, templates area in the, the Outbound marketing. I can save one of my emails as a template. So I've gone back to that case closed send survey and I've just saved it as a template called case template. So now if I go into it, my template is now there and I can open that up and continue on customizing and making any changes or modifications as needed. So that's the emails and the email templates. For the most part, it's the same. So you should be fairly um, quick to get up and, and running with that. It's just remembering that you created an email template, but you created it in outbound marketing and you want to do a new one, you now have to recreate it in real-time marketing. You can open them up and copy the HTML and then paste them into real-time, um, but just keep that in mind. If you're going looking for it saying, I know I created my template, just make sure did you create it in outbound marketing. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this something that you're ready to start using yet? Are you ready to start creating your real-time marketing emails and sending them out? Let me know in the comments below. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.